Somebody wanted to know how to make a sprinting mechanic like in Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption, where you have to button mash to sprint. So we're going to start by looking at the idea behind it, and then we'll walk through creating the script. So hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed, and let's get started. To make this work, we want to have some multiplier that we increase up to a maximum value by pressing a button multiple times. Then when you stop pressing the button, the multiplier should start decreasing until it reaches 1. Let's look at ways to increase the multiplier first. One way to do this is to just add a constant value to the multiplier each time we press the sprint button. But this gives a really linear acceleration, and I think it looks better if instead of that, we pick a scaling value that's greater than 1, and every time we press the sprint button we multiply our speed multiplier by that scale value. Another option I think would work really well is if you use an animation curve to define the acceleration, and then just set the speed multiplier to the value on the curve. The second half of the problem is decreasing the speed multiplier once you stop pressing the sprint button. To do this, we're going to use invoke repeating to call a function at equal intervals to decrease the speed multiplier as long as the player hasn't pressed the sprint button recently. And for deceleration, we have all the same options we talked about for acceleration. Now that we know how it will work, we can get into writing some code, but let's start by setting up an input action asset first. I'll add a move and sprint action, and make sure I hit the save button. In this case, I also want to generate a C-sharp script from the action asset. If you want to use a player input component instead, you can do that, and I have a few videos that cover how to do it. Now let's make the avatar controller script that's going to move the player. First we want to add a character controller as a required component, and then we'll get a reference to it in the awake method. And if you're following along by generating a script from the input actions, then we also need to make a variable to hold the instance of our input actions. Then in awake we can create a new instance and make sure to enable the map we'll be using. Now an update, let's quickly set up the movement controls. We're going to read the value from the move input and turn it into a vector to move the player. Then we can call controller.move and pass in our move vector multiplied by time.delta time. So now we can handle increasing the sprint speed. So first we'll create a new variable called sprint speed multiplier, then create a function to increase the multiplier. We're going to be using an input action to call this function, so we need to make sure we pass in a callback context. Now every time we call this function, we'll increase the sprint speed multiplier. So I'm going to increase it by multiplying it by 1.5. You'll also probably want to set a maximum speed, so let's set that to 10. And then in the increase speed function, we can set our multiplier to the minimum of the max possible speed or the multiplication. This will stop us from overshooting the max speed. Now in onenable, we want to subscribe this method to the performed event on the sprint action, and on disable, we'll unsubscribe. To decrease the speed over time, we're going to create another function that's going to multiply our speed by a value that's less than 1. Similar to how we have a maximum speed, we want the minimum value of the speed multiplier to be 1. So we'll use the max function to set it to the max of 1 or our multiplied value. Now to call this function, we want to use invoke repeating, which will continue to call the function with a constant delay between each call. The first number we pass into this is how long Unity will wait before it calls the function the first time, and then the second number is how long it waits between each call. Now there's still one problem we need to fix with this. Right now, even if the player is trying to sprint and they're spamming the button, we'll still be decreasing the speed, which makes the movement jittery. So to fix that, we're going to create a new float that's going to store the last time we press the sprint button. 
So now in our increase speed function, each time we press the button, we're going to save the current time. And then in the decrease speed function, we only want to decrease the speed if the current time is greater than the last press time plus some delay. Now we can go test it by creating a ground plane and a capsule character, and then make sure to add the script to the character, and it should automatically add our character controller since we made it a required component. You can try playing with some different ways to accelerate and decelerate your player, but that's all I'm going to cover in this video, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to help. And make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.